everyone, I'm Bella and thank you for joining me for another frog food drawing commentary. This piece took 52 hours and 21 minutes. It sounds like a lot of time, but it's actually not. It's a little over two days, because two days is 48 hours, so yeah, a little over two days. Um, I worked on it over a course of a week because I literally started it the Sunday before school started for the second semester. So and teachers love to load up assignments on after break, so I did have to space it out a little bit. It felt a lot longer than it actually was. Plus, I was so distracted <laughs> making this. Last time I had commissions while making this, while making the last one, but this time I was just totally sidetracked on a million different things. This one, mood-wise and color-wise, is a lot different than my previous ones. My previous ones, I've always tried to be like super happy, super happy, crazy, energetic. This one's definitely more moody, more serious, way more monochrome. I did black and black was the color palette for this. There wasn't a lot of thought process. My brain was fried. I wanted it to be an action piece. My brain was like, anatomy's not happening. We're not doing poses. It's gonna be straight up and down. No movement. I don't know why, but that's what happened. A lot of you guys want to know what I draw on and what program I use. I use Procreate, whatever newest version that is. You can get it on the Apple Store. I don't know if it's available for Android, but I know if you have an iPad, you can get it. And it's like 10 bucks, $9.99. And I use Apple Pencil and the second generation iPad Pro. And brushes wise, I buy, I buy brushes from an amazing person on Instagram. Like their brushes are amazing. So I'll have that in my on my Instagram if you go follow me at Bella of my froggy stuff. For this specific piece, I bought new brushes. They were like $2.99 or $3, like super, super cheap. And um, I got them from ArtStation. So I will put that on my Instagram as well. So I have a square brush phobia, and it's just because like I feel like I have a lot less control, but that is something that I need to get used to because I am fell in love with the whole like more like blocky, confident sort of brush strokes feel of pieces. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but yeah. So I've really been looking for a nice like square brush to use, and this new brush pack I got has like the perfect brushes, like they're amazing. And they actually did not suck at all. They were actually phenomenal in this new piece. I did like the shoes with it, I did the bag. They're great. I find square brushes are really good for like blocking out. So I use a circle brush, like a circle like watercolor brush for blending. And then I use a square brush for like blocking out shadows and or like light and stuff like that. So that actually, that color combination, or that color combination, that combination, was gold. Gold, and I'm definitely gonna do it again. Also, I have this I have this thing where I feel like I have to use like, or I get really lazy, and I only use one brush for the whole piece. And that's a really bad habit that I have to break because I, like, it's okay to use more than one brush. Like, you should use more than one brush because you know, different brushes are used for different things. So, yeah, I just get so lazy. That's why I love doing grayscale because I don't have to like change the color or think about hues or undertones. It's just like black and white, you know? So in this episode, I wanted to talk about art style and how important really is it to have a cohesive and consistent art style. On Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and stuff, people a lot of times tell me that they love my art style. But I feel like my art style or the way I draw is really inconsistent. I guess the fact that I draw me and mom's characters every time and if they're not me and mom's characters they're like random OCs that are black and they have locks but even then they do like I feel like the vibe of them the vibe of the characters the vibe of like the technique is always a little different it's always a little off and sometimes it's not even like recognizable like like the it's not like half your stash just like generic sort of feeling so I'm still trying to work that out I did make it a point to have a consistent eye style, or at least eye shape, because eyes are kind of the gateway to the soul. Like if you change the eyes, the whole character kind of changes. So, but the problem with that is I went with a very like round circular eye shape. And if you want to make the character squint, it had, I really had a really hard time figuring out how to make them squint in a way that would keep it looking like the way I draw eyes. So, but I did it in this piece. 
I did it in this piece and I figured it out. It also definitely helps that they were at, the, at an upward angle. So the bottom half just has to be a, a line because you have that happen when you're at that angle. But, um, and then the curvature. So yeah, the, the angle definitely helped, but that was also a problem for me having to figure out like, well, I have these circles. That's literally how I draw the eyes. I just circle, circle, and then details. But having to figure out how to like cut it in half and make it look still look good was kind of difficult for me. So for the most part, I feel my art style is not very consistent. Which brings us back to the question, how important is it to have a consistent art style? So when it comes to social media followers and stuff like that, in my experience, I've seen um, people that have a really cohesive, really recognizable art style have get a lot of followers really, really quickly, which is a huge incentive for a lot of people. But there are different ways to be cohesive. Some people only draw environments. Some people only do anatomy sketches. Some people have the same color palette and the same characters and only do fan art or only do OCs and stuff like that. But even though I really wanted, I've, I've always really wanted to find an art style, I've always been incredibly apprehensive about it because I'm very, very scared of, of peaking and of plateauing and in my opinion, when you kind of find that co consistency and that cohesiveness, you kind of start to draw the same every time to some extent. And then you're not trying to like actively change anything. Like you're not, you might plateau a little bit. But keep in mind, I'm like a 15 year old on YouTube with their like fourth video. So I'm not an expert by any means. But that's just a concern that I have. If we take social media out of the picture and only focus on art, our style can also be very good because you start to become hyper focused on this one like style of drawing and that makes you an, a master at that style and that experience is gonna help you know what doesn't work and what does work and it kind of relieves the pressure of having to experiment all the time but personally i like experimenting it's very much a love-hate relationship i'll draw one thing like 10 times until I get it right and then never draw that way again. It's incredibly stressful, but I guess I probably do like it because I do it all the time. But that makes my Instagram like a hodgepodge, like makes no sense. I do, I'll do like an art dump. I have five different art styles in the same art dump. It's literally just doesn't, my colors are even off. I don't even have consistent colors. I don't even use consistent like saturations or anything. It's just like all super random. So back to the question, how important is art style? Well, career wise, in my opinion, I think it all depends on what you want to do. If your career is like social media based and like gallery work and it's all like about your brand, I would think that art style is really important. But if you're like an animator or do a lot of client work and that sort of thing, diversity is probably also very sought after. But then also niches are oft often very sought after too. Cause I know in like the design world, if you have like a thing, if you like a niche, like a thing that's like, oh, that designer did that because they have like this weird paint streak type technically to do. Then that's very sought after too. So I honestly have no idea. So I'm gonna say if you have like six art styles and they're all amazing, then you're golden. But that's gonna take a while and a lot of experience. And I forget, I'm still 15, I'm not even 16 yet. I'm still 15. I started drawing seriously like last summer. So it's like kind of naive of me to expect so much. Like I'm already supposed to have everything figured out. I'm not. And if you're young like me, it's, and you've been just started getting into art and you just started getting into drawing, it's like we don't even we haven't even started we haven't even scratched the surface of everything that we have to know and everything we're gonna know any at any point that you're at now you'll be like leaps and bounds ahead of that in like a year or two years so yeah i would feel like the cure to all of this is time and experience and a lot of times we go on social media and we see people that do all these amazing things and they have all this all this all their art stuff figured out but they're also like art students in college or been doing this for 30 years. So, you know, there's a, there's an age gap there. So give yourself a break if you don't have a consistent art style and don't think about it too much because I think about this way too much. Don't think about it, okay? Literally, I'm just gonna focus on finding out what I like to draw, 
finding out what I'm good at drawing and then getting a lot better at the stuff I hate to draw. And just overall being good. So yeah. When I was drawing this piece, I really liked the light, the lighting that I did. I've been looking at a lot of pieces where they have like a character on like a white background, but then it looks like almost like they're not on a white background and they're just behind like white lights or in front of white lights because they have the white lighting coming on them from the side. So that was probably my favorite part. I feel like that added a lot of dimension, not to mention the like menacing looks on our faces, please. I've been so obsessed with like female action movie characters and this is totally easy my cravings. So fantastic, I'm so proud of this. Also the graphic design part, cause we all know that's like my favorite part, okay? Also cause it's the easiest, but Please, it brings everything together. This looks like a full-on movie poster to me personally. Now, I mean, I think it's mainly because I put like the the word, the wording, like the the ex, like the my froggy stuff or Bella my froggy stuff, and then like Toy and Bella and the date type things on the really that that really skinny font above the XOA in the background. By the way, the big tall letters in the back is XOA. I'm not really sure where this is, this part of me talking is going in, like if it's corresponding to that part of the paint. But if you see that later, or if you've already seen that, that's what that means. <laughs> XOA is something that I came up with like last year when I was first getting into graphic design. It's actually an X, an X and O in a triangle. Which I guess that means it's an X that's a circle in a triangle. But if you just say XOA because that sounds cooler. Uh, the X stands for craft, the O stands for reuse, and the A or triangle stands for recycle. Um, it actually makes sense because like craft and the scissors and the O reuse the circle and then the triangle is recycle. When I drew and like positioned the characters, I didn't take into account what I was gonna do for the text. So I had to just put something in the background because it looks really nice. I think at first it was like a, the date and then I just had that super long um, font in there and it looks really cool and like spacey or spy-ish. This isn't really sci-fi, it's more like spies. But anyways, and that was really cool, but you couldn't even tell what it was. So the mom came in and she was like, you should put X away. And I was like, okay. Then I tried it and it worked, so I kept it there. Nothing about my art is methodical. It's all like very much on a whim, so. But overall, I do love this piece. I think it'd make a great poster. Um, I think the skin's really good. I got, I have a pretty good grasp on skin these days. All those watercolor brushes, I'm very proud of it. And um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I already have an idea. Overall, I think the piece looks pretty good. It should be done or almost done by now, so we're gonna leave it up there for you to stare at it. And um, I think it looks pretty cool. It's a nice, make, probably make a nice poster. The only thing consistent about it in relation to my other pieces is that it's Toy and Bella. But you know what, you gotta spice it up, add a little bit of flavor. The skin looks very nice. I don't know if you noticed, but on the nose of my character, there's like a, there's like a highlight. It's not how you usually have a shadow because the light is kind of going like, this way. So I'm very proud of that super smooth watercolor brushes. I'm very, I'm very happy with it. I already have an idea for my next piece, but I'm not gonna vocalize it because I don't want to jinx it. I guess some people would think that's like reverse manifesting, but you know what? I just keep it in my head so the universe can't have its way with my ideas. Plus, I think it's gonna be 10 times harder than I think it's gonna be because I don't even have references yet. So, um, if it doesn't work, you'll never know. I never made any promises. Okay, you get what you get. But yeah, that's this month's video. February, the month of like Valentine's Day and romance. And I decided to go with super serious Tony Villa men in black like alien hunters. Thank you for joining me for another frog food drawing commentary. You can follow me on Instagram at Bella of my froggy stuff to see more of my art. And follow us on Instagram at my froggy stuff and the frog vlog to see more of my froggy stuff stuff. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell or wherever that is so you can be notified for next time we post another frog food. And I'll uh, see you next time. Bye!